Hey, it's the Wrestling Caucus. I'm Peter A. I'm Smiley Ariaga. Sorry, I was exiting out a window. Oh, okay. That's cool. <laughs> and you can listen to the caucus anywhere you get podcasts. And you can follow us on the socials. Facebook.com slash the Wrestling Caucus. Twitter at Wrestling Caucus. And on Instagram at The Wrestling Caucus. And today is part two of our discussion of the good and bad in professional wrestling. So, Smiley, we're going to start off with the bad stuff because I want to end on a good note like last yes. time. So, begin. What don't well, you like about wrestling? Oh, what don't, what don't I like? Yep. I don't mean, like, I, I, I feel like I said a, a mouthful in the last video, but I guess, uh, I don't know. I, because I know wrestling is unintentionally funny. Like you usually, if, if anything, the, 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 the times where I've laughed at, at like, or laughed watching wrestling the most is like stuff that happens like out of nowhere or it's like, I don't expect to happen. But like, and like, you know, like I, I know theater is like different, but like oh, one thing I've learned in theater is that like when you try too hard to be funny, when it gets in the way of believability, then you're not funny. And like, I, I, I and like one thing I can generally say about like wrestling when when things, when people try too hard to be funny, when it gets in the way of the believability of what you're watching, then I, I kind of just tune out. I'm just like, okay, they, they don't really care about like, you know, showing a fight or they just, they just, it's just a dumb joke. Like, I don't know. And one example I can come up with, we were watching WrestleMania Backlash last night and there was supposed to be a lumberjack match between The Miz and Damian Priest. And you know who the lumberjacks were? zombies because they are promoting Batista's zombie movie army of the dead so they thought let's have zombies around the ring and no one in the building panicked at least not in a way that you can believe and it was just like we were all just like what the fuck are we watching and it just took me out of it like if, I felt bad for people who had to go on and put on wrestling matches after that. Like the main of the, the show ended with Cesaro and Roman, which was great. But I, thank God they didn't go right after the zombie thing. Cause like, it's just, Oh my God, how can you just, I don't know, man. It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. And you know what? The zombie thing, that's a lot of things that's wrong with wrestling. That's outside of the ha ha. You know, I was actually going to put a ha ha ness in, in, uh, in wrestling, but, um, <laughs> But yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. But uh, yeah, you know, I kind of felt embarrassed watching that because like if I say I'm a wrestling fan to somebody, you know, that I'm starting to get to know and then they see that, they're going to think he likes that shit. You know, I don't care what people think, but it's just like, God damn, like I like pro wrestling, but you know, and even sometimes WWE's brand of, pro wrestling you know it's not really pro wrestling even sometimes i enjoy that you know there was the, the backlash show some great instances of professional wrestling whatever wwe wants to do with that and there was some good examples of that but we saw the best and worst and it was just that it's just i don't know what that is look when you look at television there's a tv show in a whole as a whole there's some great things there's some great tv shows out there and as far as the standard of what a good television program is supposed to be, WWE is way behind the times in that regard. So, all right, my turn, I guess. What I don't like. Ah, and we, we were kind of talking about this uh, offline and uh, I started thinking about it more and more and it's AEW's ranking system now. Here's what I like about it. I think it is a, it's an easy way to make matches and to choose contenders, right? So I think one of the pre-AEW, um, and I think this problem really only existed that I saw really in WWE. You know, you can easily pull out other examples, but like, you know, off the top of my head, New Japan has tournaments, right? To decide contenders to major titles, right? But WWE is just like, random and the fans would think oh this person deserved this because they're a good wrestler even though they're not over at all with the crowd you know pre-covid world but uh AEW has okay this guy's a number one contender he's he's number one in the rankings right and you look at his win-loss record and it's like oh wow okay that makes sense 
You know, it's it's easy. It gets that stuff out of the way. So there's no more you deserve it. It's like the guy who's the number one contender is the guy who wins a lot. However, um, someone who's just watching the show, right? You see, here's the thing. I had to, because I don't want to sound like a dork on here. Like I, I had to look up really what the ranking system is all about in AEW. And then, let me just say, they, the announce, the, the comments, they don't tell us really that much about this ranking system and why we should care about it. It's a nice idea on paper, but it's, it's, it's convoluted and it's not explained thoroughly to us. It's, it's, it's thrown out randomly. Like, um, this person is number one. I'm like, really? Uh, okay, but it's it's not really fleshed out a lot on TV. It's mentioned, but it's not thoroughly explained because, again, you know, it's a television show, right? And the one thing they can take from from sports is s- sports. The, the teams that are winning, you know, you're not always watching all the games ever. If you're like a Yankee fan, you're watching mostly Yankee fan the Yankee games. You're not really watching what's going on in the with, with the Oakland A's or, or the, the Royals or whoever, the White Sox. However, the broadcaster explains to you what teams are on a hot streak right now. Oh, th- this team, they may do that all the time. They may say, okay, this, this te- they're on a, you know, 10 uh, game winning streak or whatever. But the one thing I will say is that AEW does have the crawl on the bottom of the screen that says, okay, the AEW dark, this person won or whatever, whatever. So you can literally see it, but I wish it was just explained because it's a little confusing. It's a little, it's, and it's not really fully explained. Like, okay, they have tag rankings, they have women rankings, and they have men rankings, but it's like, you know, the person with the number one ranking, can they contend for the, is it just for the world title? Can they contend for the TNT title? Or it's not really explained thoroughly. Because it's a nice idea, but I wish it was fleshed out more and, or at least explained to us. The win-loss record, I think is great. I think that idea is is a really because again, like I said before, the you deserve it shit is just is bullshit. And you, whoever's the number one contender, it's like, okay, their win-loss record is or the champion themselves, their win-loss record is through the roof. I'm like, that's great, that's believable. But the whole ranking system is a little bit, you know. I, I know Tony Khan's a data guy, he's an information guy, but I wish just explain it to us thoroughly, just get more detail into it so we can try to understand it if you're because they, they are trying to go for the sports presentation thing okay you want to do that great but you have to explain this shit to us that's all well here's the thing I, I think it's what yes he is a stats guy and i think it's I, I i don't know what i really don't know what goes on back there there are some things i see as much as i there are a lot of things i love by aw there's some things that happen on tv i'm like what the fuck happened what i the ranking system i think it's just one of those things where it's just like it's like, yeah, we have stats, but we don't, we didn't think it through. You know, it sounds cool. We have a ranking system, but yeah, but what is it? You know, I don't think, I, I don't, I don't think they thought it through at all. I, I don't know. Like, it's like, you mentioned ranking system. I'm like, wait, what ranking system? Like, oh, that thing. That I just, it's a I don't nice idea. Like, it doesn't matter. It's a nice idea, but it's kind of, it's half baked. Yeah. I think that's all. It's just half baked. But if it's you're like, not I, going to explain to us, just get rid of it entirely. Keep the win loss record. But here's another thing. Here's another thing. Like wrestling, you know, it's 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 this kind of um, it's nothing that can, it can't be solved in a day because it's very complicated. But professional wrestling, the person who's on top or the people on top are the most popular. Like in real sports, um, the the guy who's the champion in UFC is not necessarily the most popular person there. You know, they're probably just they're, they're the best fighter. But the thing is, how now how MMA books their shows is really marketing. It's like we can't just put the best fighters in the main event because they're not all stars and that we got to put the people in the main event. that's going to draw the money. So wrestling now, you know, they have, to, if you're going to be like a more sports center product, okay. Yeah. You have to put the guy on that's winning, but you, it, it, you know, it, it's, it's predetermined. So the person that you want to um, rack up wins, they also have to be over. So you know, I don't think it's ever going to be a time where it's going to, you know, it can if you let it fall through the cracks. That the person that's winning a lot is the guy that's not over. You know, like then what do you do? You know, because they're, uh, but you know, I don't think they've they've got they haven't, they haven't gotten that because the people that have been winning a lot are the people that are like, are pretty popular. So I can't complain too much about that. But again, as a whole, the ranking system it just needs to be explained thoroughly. I mean, and look at oh, sorry, 
That's not uh, no, it's okay. I mean, let's finish my look, point. Like, look at boxing. Who's the most talked about person in boxing right now? An influencer? It, yeah, it's Logan Paul, right? Yeah. Or Jake Paul, whatever the hell. Like, one of the two morons. But, like, it, it, are they the next Oscar De La Hoya? No. no. And, but he was a, he was a draw. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. But, like, it's just, like, uh, these guys aren't known for being the best fighters. They, they, they're paired with guys who they can – who are on their level, who probably have less skill than they do, and they're just names. Like, these guys – like, like one of the – didn't one of the Paul brothers uh, – weren't they on the same card as, like, the Mike Tyson? And, uh, I don't know. I don't know. It, it, it's just, like – yeah, like it's, a, it's, it's about, like, popularity. You know, like, who's, who's the most popular, I guess. Yeah. All right. Um, anything else on your don't like list? I don't like list. Oh God. Yeah. That, well, no, no, not, not really actually. Like, I, I don't know. I, I, yeah, I know. Right. Jesus. I, I, <laughs> I feel like I said like everything I, I needed to, I feel like I said all like most of what, all my negative feelings about wrestling on the, in the last video. Okay. Like, too much. <laughs> um, I have one thing, but, um, you're I, going, I know so. you're going to I know you're going to agree with this because we talk about this a lot. Um, and when I say it, you're gonna be like, damn, should have put that on my list. That is intergender wrestling. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Um just I'm just saying it. I'm being real. This shit ain't believable at all. You know? And wrestling at its best sometimes takes inspiration from sports, right? You know, um, Lisa Leslie is probably a better basketball player than some of the men, right? Definitely better than I am. I don't yeah, know. she's yeah. not going to play with the guys. You know what I mean? No, no one would pay to see that because, you know, the NBA and, and it gets really physical sometimes. Like guys, you know, they knock each other down, you know, whatever they, you know, they have to, you know, uh, when you're when you're playing defense, you have to get all, you really have to like, you know, get really close and on top of them. And that men and women are not going to mix like that. People who generally speaking are not going to pay to see guys and girls, you know, check each other, you know, in hockey. Oh my God. Hockey is very, very physical. Can you imagine men and women body checking each other? You know what I mean? Like, but again, that's, those, those aren't combat sports, but okay. Let's talk UFC. Hockey can turn into a combat sport. Oh, well, yeah. We, we, right. That. But you're not going to see women boxers and men boxers fighting each other. You, you, no one's going to want to see men and dudes punching the shit out of each other. And I'm sure I, there are rare videos you can find if you look it up on YouTube and shit. Like, uh, I remember, I remember seeing this one uh, clip on, on the Joe Rogan podcast where he showed like a video of like uh, I, I don't know if I'm like I, I, uh, I'm probably gonna I'm probably wrong about the country. It was it wasn't another country. This video of, like uh, this woman and this men and and, and this, this woman and this guy boxing. This woman was beating the crap out of this guy. And, you, and he was bigger than her, but like it. You, you know, like that wasn't on like in a stadium. It was in, in a very like uh, small like venue. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, but I, I don't know if that, that can fill a stadium. I, I'm not sure. Yeah, in pro wrestling. I haven't seen it yet. I don't know. I, d I don't believe that on a mainstream level, people are going to want to pay to see men and women wrestle each other. It's a combat sport. You have to assault each other, you know? And professional wrestling, what, what's, what's cool about it is it's like, it's um, an athletic contest that kind of gets out of hand. So it, 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 there's some like street fighting elements to it. And I don't, I don't ever want to see that because, you know, three years ago, like 2008, the summer and the fall of 2018, not 2008, 2018, um, Impact, I was starting to watch Impact again. And I went to a TV taping and um, I was in and out of Impact for a while because they ran me off with other horrible things that have happened and um which we won't get into that's <laughs> another show i guess um you know they had john morrison tessa blanchard uh the lucha brothers santana and ortiz eddie kingston um conan um matt seidel brian cage um taya valkyrie a lot of great talent and stories were easy to follow they weren't stupid they weren't insulting to my intelligence um i thought slam reversary 2018 was one of the best pay-per-views of that year and what really turned me off again to impact was when Tessa Blanchard started wrestling with the guys. Tessa Blanchard wrestling with Brian Cage and tussling with Sammy Callahan. I saw the go home angle to their pay-per-view match and I see 
a bunch of dudes holding Tessa Blanchard up and Sammy Callahan hits yeah, her. Yeah, they're like mafia style beating the I'm shit. I'm like, what the like, fuck Jesus is this Christ. shit? You know? Like, and, whoa, like, what the fuck? But like, and like, there was another thing around that time where like Disco Inferno, who I can't tell if it's a shoot or it's a work, he, he does not like women's wrestling, period. And and that, you know, he he's a moron. But like, they had him on TV and Every week, like every week, I, I I don't know why I watched this for two weeks straight. He he would just literally bring a, a like you know a woman out in the, like uh in, into the ring and he would beat the crap out of her, and then he would chant mock. He would chant. He would have a microphone in his hand while beating the crap out of her, like women's wrestling, and it, it was just uncomfortable. It was like, like what what is the point of this, like? I, I don't know, like, do you hate women? Like, do you, or do you hate the fact that they have their own division and that a lot of these women are more popular than you? I don't, I don't get the story here. I'm just watching you beat the shit out of, out of women for no reason. And it's just weird. Like, and I don't know if that was before or after uh, Tessa Blanchard beat Brian Cage clean, uh, but I'm not, I'm not sure, but this is like, this is, this is strange. I thought, I thought, uh, I thought at that time, I thought, oh, Impact was getting a little better because you, know, you had Sue Young, you had uh, Taya Valkyrie, who's now named Frankie Monet. Uh, you, you have like, and I'm like, so you have Taya Valkyrie and Sue Young, but Disco Inferno is taking up the time that they should be, beating up other women. And, and yeah, I'm just like, what? It's not I mean, it, it ended when uh, it ended when uh, Tessa Blanchard came out and hit him with a forearm and pinned him. Now I guess that was the last I saw this go on TV. Listen, <laughs> it was just, listen. It's just it just gets messy. It's just like it's very messy. And, and I, I, I don't even know what to say about it half the time. It's just like it's just not. And listen, I saw an intergender wrestling match that was very good. And if you're gonna do it, this is the right way to do it. And it was Orange Cassidy and Kylie Ray and. I forgot what promotion was. I think it was either Beyond. I think it was Beyond Wrestling. It's 2018. And Orange Cassidy didn't strike her. They just grappled. And it was really, it was a good match. But here's the thing. And in, 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 that was an indie promotion. It's not, it wasn't on national television. I don't think that stuff would get over on a major national television audience. I don't think the general public, especially if you want to make new wrestling fans, want to see men and women grappling, punching, kicking, whatever the fuck. I don't think it's going to get over. If they, if there is one, I won't be watching it because it's not it's my, not my cup of tea. It's not for me. Um, yeah. Okay. I mean, it's one thing in Kill Bill to watch. Like, uh, one of my favorite scenes in Kill Bill is when uh, Beatrix, the main character, like, is slicing 88 other guys with swords and murdering all of them. Like that, that was one of my favorite scenes in a movie. You know what I mean? You know, it was a movie. And it was, you know, it was, it was, it, it was like believable in the sense of like, oh shit, she's like tearing through these guys because she's more skilled than them. But it's like, you know, it's like, I'm not saying that can happen in real life, but like, I, I, I don't know. It, 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 it just gets weird when you like, like when you do that in wrestling sometimes, like a lot of the time. Yeah. It's, it's not something I, I want to see, you know, in, Again, like with the comic books and the Avengers movies and guys beating up girls. But the thing is, comic books, somebody drew that. It's 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 make completely make believe. Wrestling is um predetermined. But here's the thing. Um, the idea behind it is th- this is we're supposed to convince you that this is real. Like it's supposed to be has some realism to it. And really, who wants to see men and women beating each other up? I can't get invested in that whatsoever. Like not not at all. Like I, I can't do it. Um, okay, so let's get positive. What do you like about wrestling now? Uh, let's see. Botchamania, Botchamania. Yes, Botchamania. I actually, <laughs> I learned quite a bit from watching Botchamania. I learned like uh, I, you know, I was talking before about all the accidental comedic moments you see in wrestling. Usually, you see them on Botchamania. Sometimes they're not so comedic because it's times where like actually guys, uh, uh guys and girls kind of like uh, really hurt themselves. Uh, those moments aren't as funny, but like there are times where like, usually I laugh the most when I see two people trying something unnecessary, 
like or maybe something that they're not they're not skilled enough to to do and it just crashes and burns <laughs> this is like i mean maybe if you just like actually knew how to work and you know <laughs> you wouldn't get yourself in that position but it, it's different for everyone obviously but like, yeah, and it shows also that it also shows that even some of the best of that we know can you know slip up sometimes and like you know i, I hate saying the term like uh not you know no one's perfect which is which is true especially when you're watching Botchamania. you see that even some of the best and worst can mess up in 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 crazy ways and also like uh there are there are sections of other than the memes i i i, I fucking hate memes but uh there are sections in Botchamania where you'll have wrestlers reading other wrestlers books and like uh telling stories from them and it's it's awesome i saw recently uh like um formerly known as aiden english uh he was reading a section from jtg's book where like uh, him and Chad were, uh, it was a segment where they were, ch- I think they were in London and they were chanting like, they, they were, it was this promo where they're like, oh, we get that money, money. And the crowd goes, yeah, yeah. And like in the script, they had to say euros, euros. And, but the thing is in London, they use pounds. And so they wanted to creative, it, it, Shad knew that, oh yeah, we use, we use pounds, not, they, they use pounds here, not euros. We got to, you know, so he went to creative and it was like, yeah, uh, you guys wrote euros instead of pounds. And they were like, well, they, quote unquote, you know, who want you to say euros. And JTG is like, yo, we're going to look like idiots. We're not heels. And, and like, look, guys, if you want a problem with creative, save pounds. And like, so they went out there and they said euros and they got buried. They look like idiots. They knew someone in the back wanted to make them look stupid. And Chad was like, you know, I know it, it, JTG said in the book, like, there's a saying in wrestling, sometimes it's better to, you know, don't ask and then ask for forgiveness later. And like, it was just an interesting story. Like, and this is on Botchamania. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh, I learned, there are t- like, Dark Side of the Ring. I've learned more sometime this year from watching Botchamania and Dark Side of the Ring than I've learned, like, watching some wrestling shows. <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's very interesting. It, that that's the science behind botchmania. Botchmania has a lot more depth than people some may realize. It's not just about people fucking up. It's not like America's funniest home videos, but it's not just a wrestling blooper reel. It also shows you some missteps within the wrestling industry, within you know internally between management and creative, which is also very interesting. But to me, what makes wrestling botchmania interesting is Matthew's creative production elements. Like he'll take like a Simpsons quote that would um, make sense to a certain professional wrestling scenario. (laughs) And it's just, I'm not doing it justice. It's a must watch. It's just very entertaining. Um, It's, it's, it's good comedy in wrestling. Like you were saying earlier, it's, it's a good example of comedy in professional wrestling, even though it's not actually a wrestling promotion, it just shows you the, 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 the comedy and the creativity that, you know, that can happen with, you know, professional wrestling. And it's not just another wrestling podcast or commentary show. You know what I mean? It's very creative. Brilliant, actually, I think. Yes. Before, the, you know, despite the dumb memes that they tend to repeat sometimes. Yeah. I love their Simpsons references. Their Simpsons references on Botchamania are hysterical. And the the, the 8-bit <laughs> Nintendo music that's <laughs> yeah, right Nintendo underneath music. some of the, the, the actual botches is fucking great. It's brilliant. Um, oh, it's awesome. Okay, here's what I love. I've always loved this since I was a kid. Special free TV wrestling shows, right? Non, like very, like pay-per-view-like shows that are just on TV for free, right? A good example of this is Kurt Angle versus Brock Lesnar in that Iron Man match on SmackDown. And it was a big deal and... The announcers made it seem like a big deal. And the one thing they don't do a lot now, which I wish they, because now, you know, with TV rights fees is so big, you know, commercials help with revenue and everything. They're like, we're going to take one more commercial break. Stay right there. Come back. We're going to finish this big main event for the world championship. You know what I mean? Like, I like stuff like that. You know, it actually makes me want to watch the show weekly because we're going to get special shows like that with, you know, that's for free. You don't have to pay for. Um, 
Like recently, Brian versus uh, Roman for the for the WWE title, it was promoted for for a week or two. I think I think a few weeks. Yeah, I'm not sure how long it was promoted, but anyway, important world title match between one of their biggest stars. Right now, it's Roman Reigns and one of the biggest, one of the even a, a bigger star than Roman Reigns and, and uh, Daniel Bryan. Um, in a very, very good pay-per-view quality match for free on TV. Those two and, never had a bad match, not that I remember, right? No, no. They, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was like two. Yeah, yeah. Fastlane like, 2015, right. awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, they, 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 they work good together. Um, let's see, AEW recently with Blood and Guts. You know, that was originally supposed to be a TV show anyway. At the Prudential Center originally, we were supposed to go. We still have tickets to that. Um, yeah. hopefully you can argue some- it was a better TV show. It, it was a better, it was better. Uh, it, it, I think it came off better on TV. Like I didn't hear a, a lot of people probably didn't enjoy the live experience all that much. I heard the opposite. Really? Um, well, you know, Jim Valley. I mean, not from- everyone, but I, I, I've heard that like some people went there live. Like they, they didn't so, like, uh, obviously there are people who didn't mind watching um, some of the matches pre-taped on the, on the screen, but there are some people who five. <laughs> Five people. Yeah, five. Um, I, Jim Valley from the Wrestling Observer website was there. And he said that, you know, the, the controversial Jericho um, tumble, um, he said, looked great live and he hasn't seen it on TV yet. And um, anyway, I'm not going to get into all that. It's been exhausting. Yeah, I wasn't there live, but like, uh, but, uh, actually, yeah, on TV, uh, the, the bump, like, it, it, it probably, I would imagine, like, after watching Jericho fall into, well, the steel, "Quote unquote steal," <laughs> uh, and, and, and I, I would imagine this probably came off better live than it did on on television. Uh, like, uh, yeah, that specific but, moment. Right. Actually, but, I did love the blood and guts match. Like, I did. I did enjoy that a lot. Actually, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, the big special, heavily promoted main event for free on television. These days, TV is so important in professional wrestling. We we need to have special TV moments, special TV matches for free. One to help you build an audience and to get people that already watch your show to watch it, want to watch it consistently every week. So every now and then, it's good to give the fans something special for free. And I love that it's starting to it's it's happening a lot more. Um, I remember when Impact a few years ago, about seven, actually eight, nine years ago, they stopped doing pay-per-views every month. They started doing pay-per-views quarterly. And every now and then they'll do a special TV show that's like a pay- of pay-per-view, pay-per-view quality, you know, which which I like. Um, you know, Wait, AW- didn't AW like uh, that cage match between Cody and Wardlow? That was on TV, right? Yeah. That was awesome. Great. Yeah. And I was like, the, I enjoyed that better than, than some of their pay-per-views. Like See? that was sick. Like very good. That's it. That's yeah, it. I feel like they could, I feel like they should have called that night AW Atlanta. <laughs> like, that was a pretty sick. Uh, uh, like, like that man. Like I, we were. I wish we were in Atlanta for that. Man, that was cool. Yeah, that was really good. So, yeah, that's what I. That's what I like. I hope to see more stuff like that. Um, anything else? Add Smiley before we wrap up. Oh well, yeah. There, there's another thing I did like. I I, okay. I do love in, like wrestling. Like, and this is obviously obvious, but uh obviously obvious obviously obvious <laughs> i love it when wrestlers can connect with the crowd recently i was watching uh dark side of the ring the nick gage episode and i know like yeah i know people have mixed opinions on deathmatch wrestling uh but nick gage he's a guy who can like i don't know how he does it the way he connects with a crowd is like insane i can't even explain it another guy who's a, a way different way different wrestler than him cesaro like cesaro like obviously like uh, he he does like nick gage is like he my favorite thing about him is his promo like he he's a phenomenal talker he's an incredible talker like uh he he made me like uh deathmatch wrestling a lot more even though I've, I've always been entertained by it cesaro is like is just like he doesn't have to say anything and by the end of his match like everyone will be like screaming for the guy. Like I like uh, in WrestleMania, like uh, the last WWE show that had people recently. It's like it's almost like his reaction never left. The, the people did not forget about Cesaro. They loved him. Like I like that was like my favorite match of the night. I like you know see because I, I was sort of afraid like oh, I hope I hope like uh, 
people, some people who haven't been in crowds for a while haven't lost their steam. Cesaro did not lose his steam. He, like I, he, people were like loved him just as much as they did before before crowds went away. Like Nick Gage and Cesaro, two guys who who like I, I can't I can't explain how they do it. Like they they're so good at connecting like with their audience. Like and I and I think it's hard. Like it's something few wrestlers have. It's something like one out of like uh, ten wrestlers like has like naturally. Yeah, the, the real, real test, because, you know, WrestleMania had a lot of people, you know, about, what, 20 grand and, uh, not 20 grand, 20,000 people in there uh, in a stadium with a massive capacity at 60,000 plus. We'll have to see week to week when fans come back at a, ma- a bigger capacity, if they could still, if certain wrestlers are able to maintain that um, uh, connection. I know Orange Cassidy had that uh, pre-COVID. Um yeah, yeah, he's another one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, again, again, uh, it's 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 great for promotion to have guys um, and girls that can connect to the crowd like nothing. Like Becky Lynch, remember uh, the day like two days after SummerSlam at that SmackDown we we went to. Uh, well, they tried to make her a heel, but that's another conversation. Uh, um, she cut a heel promo, but the crowd didn't give a shit. She was that over as a baby face, but they tried to make her. She's like, you fans never believed in me. But the crowd was like, while they're screaming for her name, they're roaring, and it's just, you know, I don't know. What? She had an organic connection with the crowd. She had, a, and again, it, like you're saying, it's she's another one that has a really special organic connection with the crowd. So Keith, goddamn Lee, Keith Lee is another one, and like you know, we, did he? It, did he have a big connection? I don't. I don't. You love Keith Lee. Yeah. Because you get, I, 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 yeah, he did have some takeovers. I mean, it's like, easy people. to forget because they literally killed the guy uh, before our eyes. Yeah, I, I just oh, don't okay. remember. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't remember off the top like what his, what his reactions were. You know, because I'm, he had that Portland match with Dominic Dajakovic. I don't remember. I mean, people like that match. They did like it. Huh? I mean, I, I mean, I mean, we'll I mean, see. like he's specifically back. like he's always got he, like you know before they we went to the main roster. He's always gotten good reactions. Well, when he went to the main roster, it was COVID. So there was no fans there. So we don't know. He'll probably, well, yeah, maybe. We'll see. We'll see what, uh, see what happens. All right. With that, uh, it's Wrestling Caucus. Uh, I'm Peter A. It's Mali Ariaga. And we'll be back top of June talking about momentum in wrestling and 10 years of CM Punk's infamous, quote unquote, pipe bomb promo. And we'll talk about another one. Moment at following that and plenty more to come here on the wrestling caucus don't forget you can listen to us anywhere you get podcasts and you can follow us on socials facebook.com slash the wrestling caucus twitter at wrestling caucus instagram at the wrestling caucus oh one more thing uh did yep. you cut off yet oh nope. okay one, one more thing this is like uh, i feel bad we didn't message this before uh rest in peace to new jack man he's another one yeah, the way that guy connected with the crowd—it didn't matter what he was doing, man. He just came out with <laughs> weapons, and the crowd lost their shit. Every city they went to in ECW, he was crazy over. It wasn't just Philly; everywhere, man. Yeah, we, we yeah we, we could do a whole half hour on on, on, on New Jack, <laughs> like yeah, New Jack was all he did was go out to the ring, but he had a presence to him. And he was, you know, he he had some he was threatening realistically he just had this and people just love that people love tough tough guys uh for a lack of a better term but that's what Dujek was he was a very charismatic tough guy who didn't give a shit who didn't do much he went out there hit you with a trash can jumped off of stuff and people lost their shit you know great and his music you know natural born killers uh yeah, there will never be another like him ever absolutely not absolutely not um so rest in peace new jack and yeah it just shows you ECW's crazy influence on pro wrestling. All right. Later days.